Hello and welcome to the Will Leach Show. I am the aforementioned Will Leach, and I thank you for spending part of your day with me. Today's show is about underdogs. Americans love an underdog. It is absolutely central to our perception of our national character. Our favorite stories are ones about people who come from modest origins and scrap their way to the top through grit, hustle, and perseverance. Abraham Lincoln, Rocky Balboa, Daniel Boone, heck, Bugs Bunny. Our favorite sports teams are ones no one's expected to win, but did. From the 1980 Olympic hockey, hockey team, to Jim Valvano's North Carolina State team, to the You Gotta Believe Mets. We always think of ourselves as underdogs. Dogs that will someday have their day. This is, of course, mostly hokum for the simple reason that Americans are never underdogs. We are Americans. We have more money, more power, more guns, more cultural exports, more land, more just about everything than everywhere else in the world. For now. We're not the underdogs. We're the imperialists. Heck, we're the empire. The rest of the world sees themselves as underdogs against us, and they're right. Pretending we're underdogs is the lie we tell ourselves to keep ourselves motivated. The way that Michael Jordan used to act like no one ever believed in him. Though, of course, everyone always believed in Michael Jordan. He was Michael Jordan. We think of ourselves as underdogs so we don't have to admit who, frankly, we usually are. The bad guy. If you're looking for a recent example of this, how about Tiger Woods? Tiger Woods' win at the Masters was inspiring. A man overcoming years in the wilderness, a lifetime of tabloid hell, and his own physical demons to win on his sport's largest stage. But we're not really going to pretend that Tiger Woods, Tiger Woods, is an underdog, are we? He's the singular most gifted golfer in the history of the game. Him winning at 43 is impressive, but in no universe can Tiger Woods ever be considered an underdog. But we act like he is, because the story means more that way. If Tiger's an underdog and can win, maybe there's hope for all of us. Today's guest is Sean Astin, one of pop popular culture's most famous underdogs, from Rudy to Samwise Ganji to the affable dad on Stranger Things. His characters are always underestimated at first, laughed at, thought of as goofy or irrelevant, and then they ultimately reveal themselves as heroic and rise to the occasion. That's the way America thinks of itself, like Sean Astin of small stature, but pure heart, saving the day because of an inherent goodness and an inherent soul. But America isn't Samwise Ganji. At best, it's Gandalf, a good guy, but one who wins not because of the goodness of his character, but because he is simply more powerful than his opponents. And at its worst, these days I'm starting to get a little worried because if you ask anyone else in the rest of the world, we're Sauron. Or Tom Brady. I don't know. Whichever one is worse. Today's guest is one of popular culture's most famous underdogs, from Rudy to Mikey and the Goonies to Samwise Ganji to the affable dad on Stranger Things. Now you can find him on Netflix on the sitcom No Good Nick. Please welcome Sean Astin. Hi. Sir, a pleasure. Hi. By all means. Me. Oh, please, it's my honor. It is my all honor right. all around. So um, first off, thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. I, I feel naturally inspired like I'm going to do something good. Uh, it's going to be a nice feeling. Like, I, I think about this because like, the sight of you, and I think this is something that Stranger Things use to good effect. This is a great compliment you're paying me right now. Okay, well, don't worry. I'm, yeah, right. yeah, I'm going to stab you in the back. Okay, good. Uh, <laughs> but, but there is, I think something that Stranger Things were used to very good effect was the natural decades of goodwill that I, frankly, just like, like, there's Sean Astin. Like, that, that, there's, a, there's goodwill that naturally comes into that. And I have to say, people do not have that feeling when they look at me. Yes, <laughs> they do. Well, they, they look at you and it's, you're trustworthy. Oh, good. You're, appeal, you're, you're, you're you. reassuring. I am reassuring. Right? Yeah. I am. See, I they reassured get, you. Yeah, that I was reassured. you did. There you go. So, uh, but I'm curious about because, like, there is, I think a lot of that is because, uh, as we kind of talked about in the, in the essay, this, you are an, uh, kind of a famous underdog yeah. in, across the board. And I'm curious because... Like, in your actual life, are you constantly overcoming odds? Are you constantly being underestimated? Because it feels like that is become the Sean Astin character. But I think, again, works very... That's one of the, one of the reasons, uh, in addition to your excellent performance, of course, that works well in Stranger Things. Just don't ask my wife and kids. <laughs> okay, no. They so they give that? you a slightly right. different read on <laughs> how, like, normal and grounded and, you know, grumpy I can be and everything else. But, no, I mean, I think, first of all, thank you for, for that, that read uh, on my... On, on who I am, or at least what I what I project right. out there. I think you have to. Um, there has to be enough in me that has 
quested or tried or striven for things that 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 can come through in other things. I don't I don't think you can just like put that on, right. you know. So I think there was even as a little guy like trying to right get in there, you know what I mean? <laughs> Trying to, you know, whatever. And, and Little League, we played Little League, and I was, I wanted to be good. I was, try, I tried so hard, and I just was not that good. And, you know, they'd say, okay, take a lap, and I'd run faster than everyone. And, you know, I'd do an extra lap. Like, maybe if I show you, and they're like, you know what, you can be lazy as long as you know how to, like, make that throw, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> right. yeah, so, you can try as hard as you want, but if you can't And then, do and then a career in Hollywood or in, in the entertainment industry, film and television, whatever, you, you know, there are, there are stretches in my life where I was, I was gunning for it, you know? I was on with the agents all the time. Yeah. I was auditioning and not getting part. And so I definitely think, actually, in, in one speech that I did, I can't remember which one I did, but I, I said something, and now it's kind of coming back around to me over and over again. We put it on my website, actually. People will root for anyone who shows them their heart. And so, you know, Rudy's like the last guy yeah. on the bench. You know, there's a lot of people above Rudy that you'd think, well, you know, their accomplishments should be, you know, made into a movie or something. But he just, you know, people... And it's advice that I think people that I can take that anybody can take, which is, you know, if you want something, talk about it, quest for it, don't take no for an answer and just, um, and I, yeah, I think there's there's a thing in me that feels that deeply and hopefully, you know, I guess it comes across. You know? And it's, it's funny now because you are having like, uh, we'll, we'll talk about No Good Nick in a moment, but yeah. like you're, it's funny because like there is the Sean Astin role, but then I look at a movie like Gloria Bell that you were in, which is a very yeah. different kind of character. Yeah. And uh, and, I, and it's, it's interesting because those seem to me the type of parts that are coming around now for you. Is it, would that be you know, like, I, like is that you're you're great in that movie, but it is definitely not the traditional. Show I don't know it. how that came to me. I know that Julianne Moore was, uh, w you know, sent word that she wanted me to do that little part, and it was really just like a couple little scenes towards the end of the movie. But it was such a special movie, I I, I couldn't, you know, I was so grateful. I was so grateful to get that that offer, and and hopefully. You know, like I am who I am now. You know, yeah, I can't you feel fake like you it anymore. It yeah. you, well, no, I mean, I, I th I'm 48 years old. You get to a place in your life where you just like, I mean, I've run marathons and triathlon. I've done like the Kona, Ironman right. Kona, oh, like wow. done all this stuff. And but at a certain point, you're just like, this is who I, I am. And I think, and I, and hopefully this will continue. But when you settle into your own skin, people are like, oh, I want that. Yeah, right. So I, I hopefully that continues. Well, that's part of too, as you know, people have basically watched you grow up, become an adult, and I think it's one of the things that's fun about No Good Nick is now you're the dad. Like, we watched you as a child. Yeah, yeah. We watched you as a as a as a not awkward teenager, but a uh, you know a formidable. Sometimes quite awkward. Yes. Sometimes heroic. It Listen, just depends on what was I, written down on the script. It is I mean? my good fortune that there was no <laughs> camera on me during my awkward period. So, but I guess I, that that to me is what what I think is kind of fascinating. I think another thing that kind of connects people to you a little bit. Yeah. So I think that adds an extra resonance now for someone like you Absolutely to be right. playing dad. Yeah, well, dad on a kid's show is something that I, I think I might have even <laughs> aspired to when I was little. I mean, it's, um, and Melissa Joan Hart yeah, is, is a mom. We're playing husband and wife in this. We both have this kind of like, you know, 30 years ago, you know, relationship with an audience. And, uh, and, and so now we're getting to do this. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I just feel so... I just enjoy it. It's just fun, and it's fun to work with the kids on the show, the young performers on the show. They're they they're they're very professional, and they know the the genre better than I do. Like I haven't. This is my first sitcom. Right, right. Um, so yeah, I just love it, and, and I feel are the kids like, more professional than you were when you were a kid? Are they I more? Think they are. They, they're think, more. They're I, more like weaponized. Uh, I think yeah. so. They're 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 calibrated. You know yeah. what I mean? They're they're more dialed in. Their parents are. I mean, my parents are famous actors. Of course. Uh, but jo Patty Duke and John Aston and. and uh, but they didn't know how, I mean, they knew a lot. They knew a lot about the industry and stuff, but in terms of managing a kid's career and, and just all the little nuances of, of auditions and things, I don't know. I just think that, um, you know, the Stranger Things kids, I think, you know, no, are no good Nick family. The kids are just, the, yeah, I think yeah. they're more, a little more, I mean, my, well, I prided myself on being a professional, but like when I got Lord of the Rings and I saw, and I was with Elijah Wood, Elijah Wood had already had at 19, yeah. like this massive career starring opposite all these wonderful things. And I don't, I, like, I didn't know how he did that, <laughs> uh, you know, and, and it's just, and it's stayed, more stayed, like, and stayed normal and kind of level, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, we, I guess, I guess the real secret is if you're doing something you love and you really care about like the details of what you're doing while you're doing it, and you don't get caught up in... The other crap. The uh, things that are more superficial. I mean, we're all out here selling our show now. We really right. want to an audience to find us, so there's 
stylists and there's shows right. and there's all this kind of stuff. But they, they, they have a sense like that goes away after a minute. You know what I mean? This is, this is two weeks as the show drops and then we're back to finding out what the next thing is, waiting to see if we get picked yeah. up. And so I really do appreciate their, and like the, the kids on our show, they already had their parts when I came in to screen test for it. Oh, so and it was, it was, what I did was- So they were locked and you were, you, the, yes. the adults were fungible. The adults were fungible, <laughs> absolutely. And they, uh, I think I was locked in just before Melissa, but when I came in to do my chemistry read, right which is what yeah. used to be a screen test, you <laughs> right. know, in the old days. Um, now there's, now there's they, science. I have walked in, and they're like, oh, it's nice to meet you, and they've got the job, yeah. and I don't have the job <laughs> yet. Just so, and yeah. they've already done yeah. these scenes wow. 50 times, so yeah. I'm kind of like learning from them wow. and seeing what they know, and they're, they helped me get the job. I mean, at the end of it, I hugged them. I'm like, thank you guys so much, you know? <laughs> that's an yeah. odd dynamic. That is a, that's that's got to be acting, a dramatically it's, different it's dynamic. It's behavior. acting. It's acting. We're, it's a thousands-year-old tradition. Yeah. And, <laughs> you know, everybody ultimately, over time, e you know, equals out. And you just, you know, people who work hard and they've got a little bit of talent, a little bit of skill, they... They endure over over time, you know. The show is on. The show starts like it's really a couple. It weeks is right now there. live. That's live. It, it is it's now live. live. You can, as of today, you can okay. watch No Good Nick streaming live, and uh, it's really different because it's a Netflix sitcom. Okay, you know, it looks. It's got the living room set and the kitchen set, the laugh track, and, and the and laugh yeah. track. The laugh track is like a care. Well, actually, it's not just a laugh track. There's actually there's a live audience. studio right. audience. audience. Correct. But they sweeten it, yeah, you know, and that almost becomes a character in the show. You're like, oh my gosh, I'm watching like a show with a, with laughing. It's like you don't that, know this, but people yeah. have been cheering us. Uh, yes. The production yeah. Oh, good. This good. entire yeah. show. Well, we so. had you know, live clapping when yeah. we first came in. So <laughs> no, you thought that analog was, live. was good. Oh, that was. <laughs> That's all right. But uh, but but it's also like. It's it's it creates that mood of a sitcom, and then it gets dark. So it's a little girl who comes to live with our family. We're sort of her foster parents, but it turns out like she's stealing from us, and she's like poisoning us. And every episode, there's some other, and you're like, why is this kid doing to us? Her father's in jail. She says her parents are dead, but her father's alive. So there's this whole like, you know, we return to jokes and and we make the audience laugh. But th the deeper you get into the show, the more you realize like something's not right and they don't mind the care the, the show creators don't mind you know getting you know the in the, the third or fourth episode she's she's sobbing the the lead character and you're like i thought this was a sick on what's this girl crying for but you hopefully you start to care about her and realize what she's going through and and she's sort of an anti-hero yeah. you know uh you know how young how young can you make a, a dexter or a breaking bad right. or whatever oh, no. you know can you can a 13 year old <laughs> oh, wow. girl uh, that's right. that's it that's the and, idea. and yeah netflix the you know, they can do it. They're yeah. like, yeah. Uh, and yet it's a family film. Like right, if right, you right, look right. at all of the, the indexes or whatever, the people who curate what's appropriate for families, like this is it's a family show. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, I, hopefully, well, okay. Well, I, I think I know good Nick is the name of the you show. You did it. You did your job. You promoted the show. Now. So now you have something now, else now, I know you want to talk about. No, no, no. All right. <laughs> okay, so we have a section called Frivolous Questions of Dubious Import. Frivolous Questions, questions of, of Dubious, dubious import. import. Okay. I'd like to say things with a lot of words that are unnecessary. I'm an English major from UCLA, so I can okay. roll with you. Well, I have a UCLA question, actually. Okay. But not yet. I've heard differing views on this. I want the decided answer. Yeah, I'll tell you the truth. Rude. Okay. <laughs> That's good. You were sworn in before the show. Um, okay, so the, Joe Montana. Yeah. Rudy. Yeah. I, Joe Montana has claimed kind of famously in an interview that Rudy was no big deal and, and, and they made too big of a deal out of it, which I'm sure movie stuff one way or the other, like people always embellish things for movies. I don't really care about that. Like Air Bud also is not dunking. Like I'm okay. <laughs> I'm okay with things like moving around. But to me, it, I feel like it told me something about Joe Montana that he felt like this story that inspires like so many people. Right. He was like, oh, just so you know, right. the real jocks were mocking the guy. So right. can you tell me, so tell me how to feel about it? You this? are absolutely wrong. Okay, good, good. You are Makes one, me happy. You could not possibly be further from the truth. Okay, oh, make a gif jo out of that, please. Joe, Mon <laughs> Joe Montana was, so, first of all, how many Super Bowls do you have to win? You know what I mean? How many rings does he have? Yeah, right. So when Rudy came out, I think he was a freshman when Rudy was yeah, a senior. Right, right. He was so generous. He was complimentary towards Rudy. He, he said, yes, I remember that guy that never played, basically, right. you know, and he was, he gave the movie a little bit of legitimacy when the, when the right. film first came out. 
Uh, he went, uh, okay, so then. It was the Dan Patrick show. It was Dan yeah, Patrick, yeah. and Dan Patrick, some people get really annoyed with Rudy. Uh, annoyed with the movie, annoyed with Dan Rudiger, who played Rudy. You know, they're like, that didn't happen. Right. You know, uh, um, um, famously, he was on a radio show, and um, uh, what's his name? Uh, 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 so, what, not Eric Parsegian, but um, uh, Dan, Dan, Devine. Devine. Dan Devine. Dan Devine. Dan yeah, Devine, when he, he, he was, was still right, alive. Right, right. He called, you know, the great moment in the movie is when the players come in ceremony, Mm -hmm. they lay their jerseys, and they're like, I want Rudy to play in my place. And Devine called up a show and was like, any kid puts their shirt on my desk, they're never seeing it again. You know what I mean? Like, (laughs) you know, people are like, Rudy was offsides, man. (laughs) Rudy Rudy was like, Rudy is offsides is my favorite one. Rudy's offsides, yeah. Yeah, All of a sudden, a bunch of, like, experts in football law. Well, (laughs) my thing, you're so funny that you feel that because you love Rudy, the movie, you want to defend it like that, and I think that's... It's so beautiful, and, and millions of people feel that way. But, you know, the, the truth is that Rudy, over time, promoting his message of believing in yourself, of determination, of hard work, of, of you know, f- having faith in yourself, of not letting other people define you, these are all great things. But as Rudy's going out there and writing books and giving speeches and doing all these things, it kind of takes on a life of, that's bigger than its own. So at a certain point, guys like Dan Patrick are like, who the flip <laughs> is this guy? Right, right. Why does he think he's so great? You know, and, and, and I think there's a fair, uh, you know, right, we, we all have to. So when, when, when Montana went on that show, he was like, I think he was speaking on behalf of a lot of the Notre Dame players, right, right. a lot of other people who have really accomplished extraordinary things in the sport, and being like, you know... In Easy. order to honor all right, of them, right. I have to like say, you know, it is just a movie. It's a very okay. inspirational, powerful movie. It's moved a lot of people, but it is just a movie. Right. So uh, that makes and, me feel you did. Yeah, you're making it, me feel it, better. No, you and 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 so he, you know, my thing when that like broke and they were like, oh, what do you think? What do you think? I'm like, whatever Joe Montana says is yeah, right. Yeah, no, like I, I, I am, a, he Montana. is a hero, right, absolutely, right. and okay. and it has been such an example to uh, to other people, and so the movie Rudy deserves to be loved in the hearts of people, but Joe Montana is a football right. legend, pure and simple. Okay, good. I can yeah. like both of them. It makes there me happy to go. Yeah. I'm happy to go. Yeah. I, uh, I, I will re-stitch together yeah. my Notre Dame <laughs> Montana jersey. Um, it's like holding on to my Rudy friends, like, back off, back off. It's <laughs> yeah. cool. It's yeah. Joe Montana. Don't trouble. It's Joe Montana. Yeah. Good thing he's, he's cool. holding me back. Good thing yeah. he's holding me back. Um, okay, so uh, I am not uh, uh, personally an actor, as previously said. You established. keep saying that. I know, I know. I'm not convinced. I know. I'm actually, I'm actually a 94-year-old woman. I'm just like <laughs> method acting. Um, God, you're wonderful. Uh, please stop. <laughs> uh, so uh, you have done one of my favorite things. You've done a lot of great death scenes. I feel like you've done oh, yeah. some good death scenes. Oh, yeah. So do you have a favorite death scene? Is there a tip to convincingly die in a death scene? Uh, I think if you ask any like seven-year-old kid who has watched a movie and then gone into the living room, oh, <laughs> right. like, you know, right. um, yeah. I like watching some of the comedies uh, that where, where people die in a comedy, like yeah. uh, like in Princess Bride, right, right. You know, where he's like, uh, <laughs> oh, <yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> and he falls over. <laughs> I don't know. I think uh, I, I, you know, Sean Bean, the yeah, uh, the of, British actor, of course. Is, uh, is is famous for having died in movies in Lord of the Rings and uh, Game of Thrones and I don't know a hundred other things. I'm kind of. You know, I may not be famous for it, but I've died, you know. (laughs) You've died more than you would think. More than you think. A Centox nerve gas attack. (laughs) Yes. That was kind of gross. Yes, that was Uh, gross. Demodogs got me in uh, in Stranger Things. So, I don't know. I think when when we did Stranger Things, I was like, look, if you're going to kill me, (laughs) let's make it big. (laughs) And they're like, oh, we're going to, and they they wrote this incredible episode for me. And they're like, and then the dog's going to get you. I'm like, more blood. (laughs) <laughs> More. More blood. And they're like, well, we don't oh, want yeah. it to be too gory. And I, I looked up on my phone, Jaws. You know, Quint right. at the end of Jaws, uh, it, it, Robert Shaw, he, Jaws literally climbs up on the back of the boat. He slides into Jaws' mouth. He clamps down on him. And then he's spinning him back and forth. And blood is spry. And I'm like, <laughs> that. that's what I want. <laughs> you know, that's what Stranger Things fans want. They want to see you, they you know, see die. You I was like, how much of that carol syrup can you put in my mouth oh, where I don't right. choke to death? And they're like, bleh. So I it's don't know. It's jarring, though. It's jarring because they cut back to you when, you, when, it, when, it, when the lights are out and you're over. And it's just it's beautiful. Not, it's it's hard, it's hard. I'll tell you what my best death was. Okay, yes. My best death was in a movie I did when I was 19 called Where the Day Takes You, and I uh-huh. played a homeless kid. Is that Will Smith's first Will movie? Will Smith's first yeah. movie. Well, uh, yeah, I think, yeah, I think it was his first yeah. movie. Um, Great. Mulrooney, yes, Laura Flynn Boyle. Yeah. yeah, I know I know my movies. 
You could be an actor. Actually, you can't. <laughs> Actors can't remember anything. Yeah, they can't remember anything. Uh, sorry, sorry. Okay, so, so I played a homeless kid who was uh, addicted to crystal meth, and then he dies of a heroin overdose. And Kyle McLaughlin, who played, was in Twin Peaks. Of course, of course. Was a drug dealer. And, uh, you know, my, I just gotten together with Christine, who has been my wife mm -hmm. for 27 years now, and, and, uh, and she was off to the side watching it, and she, she was so upset. It was so realistic, and it was, you know, trying to... I had this dual feeling of wanting to imagine what the heroin would feel like when you're shooting up. Like, it must be, it must be something that's out of this world. Otherwise, why would people live in squalor right. like this? Why would they l destroy their lives if, at least for some period of time, it did? So that, and then combined with a sense that people are going to watch this, and you're depicting something that is meant to not just, like, uh, shock people, but create an emotional journey for them where the, the idea of shooting up heroin is, it not only leads to death, but you, it's, it's linked with this feeling of just, you know, agony that you have when you're watching it. And, and hopefully that can help people. It can help people who've had that experience, who are watching it, and it's like, oh, somebody else knows, they understand what that feels like. And other people who, you know, they, maybe they have kids or they have siblings or friends who are on heroin, it's like, it can, it can, it, that's what drama can do. Yeah. It, can, it can connect you to that, that thing. So that, was, that may be the most potent one that I've done. So that is Sean Astin describing playing Samwise Gamgee. Uh, <laughs> Samwise Gamgee, who has 15 Hobbit children and goes to the Grey Havens after his wife passes away. But that's a different story. <laughs> that's right. I, I've heard that. Uh, <laughs> so I'm curious, uh, a couple more things. Uh, uh, one thing we, we talked a little bit earlier about uh, kind of being a child actor, and, and of course, and your, your mother, the late uh, Patty Duke. Yes. Your first movie. First was from according to IMDb. Yeah. If you could First, trust tele, it was a television ABC movie. after yes. school special. Call it called Please. I think it's called Please Don't Hit Me, Mom. Yes, and the not subtly titled Please Don't Hit Me, Mom. Don't hit I me. mean, I don't think they were for a lot of sales. <laughs> was that the, the one about special. teen pregnancy? No, no the Please no. Don't Hit Me, Mom yeah. was about child abuse. And then yeah. it was not the Please Don't Jump Out the Window because you're on Angel Dust. Exactly. Uh, exactly. That was the different exactly. one. But the, what's amazing to me is you were eight years old. I was yeah. seven or eight years old when you yeah. filmed the movie, and your mother played your mother in the movie. Yeah. Do you, my, my kid, I said my kid's 70, he's about, about, about the age that you were at the time. Uh, it's hard to imagine him not being very confused. Oh, I wasn't confused. Uh, you'd be surprised how much kids know. Okay, like they oh, know no. That you, yeah, oh, no. you'd be, these things are going into the computer right oh, now. No. That William is already using the... heroin. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he sees when you get angry. Yeah, oh, You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And he sees when well, you, I'm how driving. you Well, he sees how <laughs> yeah. you drive. Yeah, like, I know, there's little, I know, I know. I mean, we're I human beings. We don't, can't know. live perfect lives. But I, I would say that um, my mom was a famous bipolar sufferer, and she hadn't gotten a diagnosis at that point. But... The drama at our house was incredibly real. Yeah. Uh, and we, we mostly felt badly for her because she was suffering so much, but she was also very abusive. So the, the, the discomfort that came uh, from uh, portraying a scene in a movie where she's beating you up and screaming at you, where really what you want to do is get it right so that the director is happy with you, like you're trying to please someone else by accepting the... It wasn't confusing, but it was awkward and uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, and, and it was a weird way, actually, for her to apologize. Interesting. It was her way of, because first of all, she was beginning a career, she was giving me a career. Yeah. You know, she was, she was teaching me, you know, you, you hit your mark, yes, you say your line, you gotta know your light, you gotta be better off camera than you are on camera, like when you, that's professionalism, yeah, exactly. is caring about your fellow performer. Um, and these were all very simple things that she taught me, but they were, hardwired into me and I guarantee you that not a day goes by on any show I ever do where I'm not executing those those commands she gave me oh. she encoded them in my mind but in a weird way I don't think she had a vocab you know she would she'd be physically abusive mentally abusive like, like horrible things and then she'd feel so bad about it and then the agony she felt the guilt that she felt and when we did this show there was like we were talking about it yeah. And, we, and, and there was a beginning, middle, and an end. You could see at the end of, you know, that, in Movies of the Week, they, there's some hopeful it's ending. Right, right. It's not wrapped up completely, right. but it's like she's, real, she's had a moment where she knows she's gone too far, and she knows she needs help, and she's agreeing to get help. And on some way, for me, she was, she was saying that to me as a mother to a son, not just as an actor to an actor. So... Um, you know, powerful, powerful little thing now. Wow. Everything that Sean, every story you tell ends up with me feeling good at the end. Like, it's really amazing. Like, I wasn't kidding about that. Okay, so, um, 
so we haven't done Lord of the Rings that much. But the things I love about Lord of the Rings is but what that must have been like to have to be introduced to a whole different kind of fan when you go to like conventions and yeah. you go to those sort of yeah. things. So yeah. I live in I live in Athens, Georgia, and two of my very good friends are Tim and Carrie Kelly. They actually yeah. own a, a board game cafe where they do like like hardcore like like not, I only know like shoots and ladders, but these are like yeah. the really Dungeons hard, and Dragons, yeah, like the and really Pathfinder. serious. Stuff. The word yeah. hardcore is gnarly there, but yeah, yes, yeah, you know, yes, they do they yes. do intense. Intensive. Immersion. And they go to every gaming. Dragon Con. They yeah. go to every Dragon Con and do yeah. all that. So uh, 2010 or 2011, okay. uh, uh, they went to a Dragon Con. And, uh, and the first time I met them, I met them in 2013. I went into their home, and there was this huge picture on the wall that taken from that Dragon Con in 2010. <laughs> And I think we've got it right here. We've got a picture of that. that. So, oh my God! This is roughly the size yeah. that it is in their can home. You see, can you see the my hand on. Yes. So she is she is pregnant. By yes. the way, that's not something uh, yes. what he's doing. So the first not thing my I thought, child, as it turns out. That's why. So that's not why my I was child. Because yes. the first thing I thought. Because for the record, I'm not Luke, saying that with desperation. Luke is I know about it's eight. Not, yeah. Luke is about eight. Right. Uh, uh, well, I don't know. Okay, no, no. I we think... need a picture of Luke to satisfy <laughs> yeah, this. Yeah, that's true. But, uh, 23 and me, 23 and me, what's but... <laughs> happening? <laughs> but to me, that is one of the, like, like the thing that uh, I'm doing this, I love partly this for Carrie. Yeah, because yeah. this I is carry, huge on their wall. I carry. It's huge on their wall. She, but I, I, I say that in, in a larger sense because there is something about those conventions. Yeah. To where, yeah. like that is that is like their most like their that is bi bigger than the picture of the child when the child came out that they have on their wall. <laughs> it's like the Pope. You yeah. walk in and yeah, you know, exactly. <laughs> and, and and to me, I'm the, not the Pope. Let me yes. just be clear on that. <laughs> uh, but I'm curious, like to be introduced to that kind of fan because yeah. that's different than yeah. Goonies or that's different. You know, that's different than Rudy. I don't know. That is like a. Is it different or are they similar? Well, no. Famous? I mean, th those regional comic cons have become an incredible. Um, you and, still go and, to uh, lunch? Oh yeah, yeah. I, do, I do them all the time. Yeah. I've got kids in college. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. they, yeah. it's to me, it's a paid public appearance. Right. Okay. That's like first and foremost, I, you want to be clear to to the to the fans. You know, because they pay a lot of money, right? right. Uh, to for those for those moments, those experiences, those autographs, those pictures, and stuff like that. But but since Big Bang Theory came out, um, you know, over the last fifteen years, they are now a culturally oh, yeah. kind of common experience. They, you can get them in most cities. I mean, if I wanted to do nothing else for the rest of my life, but every weekend go to another Comic-Con, I could. That's the Galaxy Quest idea. Galaxy, right? yes, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Once in a while you gotta do something else just so you don't feel totally. <laughs> right. but, um, but no, I mean, you, um, you have a wide range of experiences when you meet meet fans in that setting, and some of them are incredibly profound. You know, the the picture with uh, with my hand on yes. her belly. That that child is now how old? Eight eight years old. Eight years. What's his name? Uh, Luke. Luke. <laughs> Luke. Give some love to Luke. Luke, I'm glad you turned out so well. <laughs> Listen to your mother. Look, she cared about you back then. I love you, Luke. Sure, Luke. You know, do work sure. hard, Luke. Make sure you're doing the right thing. Um, is there a dad involved in this picture? There is, Tim. Yes, Tim. Yes. Hi, Tim. Tim. <laughs> and Bruce. Can I get love, love to Bruce? Tim now took the picture. Can I get right. love to Bruce? So, uh, so I, uh, you know, my father told me once, um, you know, I was maybe 17 years old and I was hustling. I was trying to like, you know, get my acting career and I was directing and, you know, making deals right, all the right. time. And, and, uh, and he saw me in a, in a certain way and he was like, Sean, he goes, people are not pieces on a chessboard. Every human interaction is sacred. And he was like mad when he said it. He, he made sure I really heard him and understood what he meant. And so when you go to those things, even though it's like speed dating, you know, it's a, it's a line of 200 people. Every time I look in someone's eyes, I know, even if they're saying the same thing, you know, about what Rudy meant to them, about the, you know, how, how Lord of the Rings got them to, through depression is, is one I hear a lot. Every, that's the first time I've had that experience with that person. And so I try to listen with my whole heart and mind. And so when I see a picture like that, I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember that. Like, I remember, <laughs> you know, and they're like, oh, did you, 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 there's ways that you can kind of remember moments, uh, you know, like what what amphitheater were we in or what city right. were we in and stuff like that. And where do we have dinner that night? <laughs> That's remembering it was the second afternoon. And so I, for me, I try and take those experiences uh, to heart and every single time I do them, I'm so grateful that, that, you know, the world exists now. Like my mom, I think she did a couple towards the end of her life, but you know, when, when reality television came in, she no longer had the same income that she had when she was doing two movies the week a year. You know, and and yet there were millions and millions of people 
who love her and love her movies, felt so familiar with her for, for two, three generations, you know, and, and, uh, and so she, you know, the idea that, oh man, if she lived longer, she could actually go to these things and physically See touch people, hands, right. hold hands, you know, give hugs to, to, uh, to those people and make it and, and have be financially rewarded for that. And, you know, people assume that if you're making movies and television that you're rich. Right. And they look up online and they go, I think I'm worth $30 million if you look up online. <laughs> yeah, not worth $30 million, man. <laughs> like, it is not, that, ain't, that ain't true. So, so there's, there's just something about the commerce of it that's a little awkward. But I also feel like it's, um, it's really special. You know, and, and, and most of the people who are there are like, you know, they, it's like a tip. Right. right. It's like a tip they're paying you for the, like, the emotional experience they've had with oh, your wow. character. So, yeah. Do we get you again? Oh, my God. It's <laughs> unbelievable. I'm about to start crying. He needs a hug. This guy I needs need a, a hug. Oh, I need a hug. <laughs> Everything that Sean Astin says makes me happy. <laughs> um, sir, thank you so much for your thank time. Thank you. I, I had no idea we were going to have so much fun. I know. Well, I, 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 I was expecting it, but I understand why you weren't. You're so well prepared. Uh, <laughs> I, well, so, I just knew that you were good looking. I didn't know no, you knew stop, how to talk stop, and stop, stuff, stop. too. Sean Aston, the show is no good, Nick. It is on Netflix now. Watch that. Watch Stranger Things Season 2. Watch Gloria Bell. Gloria Bell's a really good movie, just uh, aside. I know you're not currently promoting that, but it is a good movie. Well, you so, get to, what about the voiceover stuff? You're not, you're not mentioning, uh, you oh, bet you don't even I, know this stuff. I, I, let me go get you. The, I, you, you you've done some DC <laughs> stuff. You know, yeah, Shazam. And uh, uh, there's a stuff. Lego Shazam coming out. I just but that's for a while. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I, I, I don't just go be like, who's on our show today? Oh, that's oh, awesome. Some dude, who that's cares? awesome. That's why I don't want to do a show. Yeah. <laughs> if I could freestyle it, I would totally want to do it, but homework is hard. Yeah, homework you know? is quite hard. Sean Aston, as awesome as you expected that he would be. Uh, thank you for coming <laughs> thank on. Thank you. Uh, this has been the Will Leach Show. We'll be back uh, next week with another show, probably, I assume. Please come back to SI.TV, Amazon Prime, or wherever your Will Leach is. Woo! Oh, he yeah, loves woo, me. This guy! <laughs>